Henry Blacksland was a very moody gentleman who was never satisfied with what he already had. This is what drove him to Australia in the first place. But let's backtrack a little to the little town of Kent in England, a place where Gregory was born in June 17, 1778 and grew up while attending the prestigious Canterbury Boarding School or the King's School, which was all boys at the time. After he graduated from Canterbury and helped his father out with farming for a while, he met Elizabeth Spurd and a woman he fell in love with and married in 1799 when Gregory was 21 and had kids only a short while later five boys and two girls. In 1806, Gregory told his wife that what he had just wasn't enough and he was offered 40 servants and 2,000 acres of land in Australia which he just couldn't resist so he rounded up his kids. Tools, bees, seeds, sheep, and clothing to make the long trip. Shortly after arriving in Australia, Gregory became a salesman, which he made lots of profit from. But knowing Gregory, of course, he still wasn't satisfied with his 2,000 acres of land. So he went out and bought 450 acres from a local bush farm. He can turn it into his cows grazing lands. But this was still not enough for Gregory. He wanted more. And he wanted to grow tobacco. And manufacture wine. That wine won him a medal in 1828, by the way. But back to what I was saying. So Gregory thought about the Blue Mountains and how in between there was lots of land. So to get approval of exploring that land, he went straight to the governor, Lachlan Macquarie, and since he already had a good reputation of being a salesman, he got the approval right away. In May 11, 1813, on this exploration was Gregory and Gregory's two friends. William Lawson, a man who is extremely valuable due to his surviving skills. And William Charles Wentworth, a man who would later go on to explore the Pacific and also become one of Australia's great politicians. During the exploration, Gregory kept a journal called Journal of a Tour of Discovery across the Blue Mountains of all his findings and everything that happened on his trip in this journal. This exploration took 21 long days to cross the Blue Mountains and only six days to return. Over 10 years after his trip in 1823, Gregory finally published his journal and got a mountain named Mount Blacksland after him, which was originally named Sugarloaf Hill. And took a trip to London, which led to his wine medals because he brought samples to the governor down there. On the New Year's of 1853, Gregory committed suicide after scarce no charity and personal losses of his wife and his son. So in the end, we can see Gregory always pushed for what he wanted, but it may have just been him wanting notoriety and fame, and when he wasn't happy with the amount he had in the loss of his family, he ended it all. Thank you for watching.